Hey, BC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here, and this is going to be a video response to uh, Overkill Vids, his 200 subscribers contest. Uh, he just put up a little while ago. Um, of course, first and foremost, congratulations on the 200 subs. Uh, it's definitely like your videos. I really appreciate the time and effort you put into making them. Um, love your music room. I, I remember that's one of the first things I caught uh, when I first discovered your channel was kind of that little, somewhat of a mini tour you kind of did, and I just really liked the setup of your room and the, uh, you know, that the way you had your turntable kind of mounted up on the wall over there. I think that's just really, really cool stuff, man. But yeah, congratulations on the 200 subs. Glad I can have an opportunity to be one of those and to jump in on your contest, which is a really good question. Kind of seeing the VC come full circle because I actually know we did this thread one time probably three years ago, something like that. Uh, and it was a really great question, so uh, it's, it's kind of good to see some stuff coming around again because obviously music tastes change, new things come in your collection, you rediscover stuff. So uh, I think that might be something we should do more of in the VC now too as far as threads go is kind of revisiting some of the ones we've already done a long time ago and you know, see how the answers have changed. Um, but yeah, great question. This is a, a fun one to do. So I have some that I picked out the first time I did a response to that type of question and also some new ones that popped up. So this is going to be kind of fun to do. So let's just kind of go through these really quick. I just picked out the ones that came to mind, just, you know, right off the top of my head. And then I kind of held out, like, my top four. And I'll show those at the end. But first one, which you actually hear playing in the background right now, Kenny Wayne Shepherd. This is Trouble Is. And, of course, it's uh, I Don't Live Today. Not quite as good as Hendrix's version, but uh, then again, about as close as you can get, though. It's still a really, really good version. So th that's a great cover that he did on that. Uh, and I'll kind of go back and forth between CDs and and vinyl. This is one that Travis showed. This kind of goes without explanation. Black Crows, Hard to Handle. That was an old Otis track that they kind of took. And, and I, I think did justice to it. I mean, um, that's one I think one of the keys in any type of a cover that you do is not, you know, just to cover it, but do you actually take the song to another level or at least keep it where it was. And I think the Black Crows did a pretty good job of that with Hard to Handle. Another one here, this is uh, Paul Hardcastle. It's off the Jazz Masters 3, one of the first jazz CDs I ever bought uh, back in college, actually. Um, but uh, he does a cover of Ventura Highway, which, you know, that's kind of a America track. Really, really good version of that. He kept it really true to the original, you know, kind of flower power, hippie kind of style of the song, but did it just kind of jazzy, so a really, really good cover of that. Back to vinyl, Miles Davis, and this is You're Under Arrest, I know, nice cheesy album cover, but he does a really cool cover of Michael Jackson's Human Nature on this album, which I think a lot of people may not be as familiar with this one. But uh, that's all, it was also a really good cover. Back to vinyl, My Girl, Celine Dion, I Love Her to Death. And she does a fabulous cover of The First Time I Ever Saw Your Face. Girl tears it up, man. She has got a voice on her. Love Celine. Love her to death. So that's definitely one of my favorite covers. Back to Vinyl, another one of my favorite female artists, especially from the 80s, my girl Cindy Lauper. And yes, that is an autographed copy. Thank you, Mr. Crayoni. Um, yes, Cindy Lauper on this album, she did a, a song called When You Were Mine, which was actually a, a Prince song. Prince actually wrote that song. Um, and I didn't know it for the longest time. I you know I've loved this album since like junior high, high school. And I remember I was watching. Um, there's a movie, I think it was Hamburgers or Hot Dog, the movie, or whatever. But in one of the skiing scenes, they played the song When You Were Mine, and it was Prince singing it. And I'm like, what? And then kind of looked it up and looked on the album, actually, and discovered, oh, yeah, Prince did write that. So uh, she did a, a great cover of that, too. Again, I think took it to another level, even beyond the great track that Prince made with that. 
uh, back to CDs, 10,000 Maniacs, and of course, you know, she did a, they did a cover of Because the Night on the MTV Unplugged album, which originally, I think, was, I thought it was a Bruce Springsteen song, but I actually, I think Patti Smith and Bruce Springsteen have writing credit on it, I think. Um, but anyway, th- that's a, a cover of that. My girl, Tina Turner. Of course, Ike and Tina. Uh, and of course, they did a cover of uh, Creedence Proud Mary, which was, I mean, I think also a cover that kept, you know, kept the song at the level it deserved to be. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't say it's better than the Creedence version, but I also wouldn't say the Creedence version is better than the Ike and Tina version. I mean, I think that they both did great justice to that song. Uh, another one of my my favorites, uh, of course, Joan Jett did a cover of Crimson and Clover. I guess technically on this album, she also did a cover of A Little Drummer Boy. But uh, she, obviously, uh, Tommy James and Shondells, she did a cover of Crimson and Clover. Would I say it's better than the original? Uh, I probably wouldn't say that. I, I think she did it justice. Uh, I mean, it's Joan. You know, I'm gonna melt over anything that Joan does. So that's definitely a great cover as well. And then Garage Inc. by Metallica. And you know, there, there's a number of different cover songs in this album. But the two that really stand out the most to me are uh, Stone Cold Crazy, which of course is a Queen song. And then, uh, Am I Evil? I mean, I, I think that's, oh, that, 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 that was an awesome cover. That, that damn near is, you know, near, I think. That, that's actually better than the original version. I mean, th- th- they took that to a whole other level. And they definitely held their own with Queen on Stone Cold Crazy. Um, I, I think, I think Metallica, they do great covers. When they cover a song, it's, it's truly great. But I mean, on here, they also did Turn the Page. Uh, Tuesday's Gone. I mean, some really, really great cover songs on this album. So now, we're diving into my favorites here. And I'm, I'm going to kind of count it down, too. From my fourth favorite to my number one favorite. Taj Mahal. Blues with a Feeling. He did a cover of That's How Strong My Love Is. Which I know Otis Redding did that song. I'm not sure if he was the actual original artist, but I know he did a version of it, which I always assumed he was the one that wrote it. But Taj Mahal, he took that song to a whole nother level, and it's better than any version I've ever heard off of this album. Uh, so that's how strong my love is by by Taj. Definitely is in the number four spot. Number two, another cover that was way better than the original. You have Gary Jules here, Trading Snake Oil for Wolf Tickets, and the song Mad World by um, Tears for Fears. He did a cover of this, and all, all I can, every time I hear this song, it always makes me sit around and think, Tears for Fears was somewhere when they heard this song for the first time and was sitting there going, we missed the freaking boat. We totally recorded that song in the wrong way. And Gary came along and just nailed it. He truly sang and performed the song the way it was meant to be. Uh, It's definitely a much more slower, smooth, heartfelt, kind of creepy ballad as opposed to the more upbeat type of thing that Tears for Fears tried to make out of it. And uh, I say that every time I talk about that. Tears for Fears missed the boat and recorded that song the wrong way. So again, check that out. Mad World by Gary Jules. Number three on my list. Number two, got to go with my man Joe Cocker, and I think the title track says it all, with a little help from my friends, uh, which of course was a, a Beatles, um, you know, I guess, the, well, I guess technically the writing credit was Lennon and McCartney, but you know, it's just a Beatles track, and again, I think he took it to an entire, entire another level. I, I don't even really like the Beatles version. I mean, I'm very right here with it. This song sends goosebumps through me, I mean, just all over every time I hear it. And when you watch him perform it live at Woodstock on the DVD, mm, 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 nails it. Absolutely nails it. That's my number two. My number one cover of all time, without question my favorite cover, 
and happens to be another Beatles song. It's off of Hey Jude by Wilson Pickett, and it's the song Hey Jude. Now, Hey Jude by the Beatles is a, I mean, it's a total classic anthem, without question. And again, Wilson took it to a whole nother level. I mean, that, that grit and soul and power that's in his voice, he, he just, he, he t- takes a song to a entirely new level. Especially the part on the, in the song, you know, where in, in the regular verse in the song, how when they start going into the na na, you know, Hey Jude part, uh, like right when that kicks in, he goes into this this belt. It's not even a word that he's saying. He's just like screaming at the top of his lungs, and I swear you can just hear his soul pouring out of him. It's just it's so rough and so soulful and so gritty and so powerful, and it's just like it's it's, it's almost the same feeling you get when Hendrix hits some of the notes that he hits when he's you know doing stuff like the like the guitar solo on a Voodoo Child, or the uh, the 10 second note he holds going into the, the guitar solo on a Machine Gun. It's like that type of chill, just grit running through your body. If you have not heard that, man, check it out, because Wilson tears it up on that song. That song in and of itself made him one of my top three vocalists of all time, which is a video that we did a little while back. So that's my number one pick as far as cover songs. So, again, Overkill. <laughs> so I, that's all I like to call you whenever I think about or refer to your videos. Uh, congratulations, man, on the uh, 200 subs. Glad I could be a part of the contest and definitely look forward to uh, hearing more of your stuff, man. All right, take care, VC. We'll talk to you soon.